Hi, my name's Branner. I'm a second year medical student. I came to Warwick in 2013 to study medical microbiology and virology. Graduated in 2016 and then worked for a year before coming uh, back to Warwick to study medicine again. And I worked in the, in the year between coming to medical school as an outreach and public engagement officer. So I helped get kids into biology, basically. And it was really good fun. So have you always wanted to be a doctor? So I used to want to be a doctor, yes, before I uh, did my A-levels, but I didn't do as well in my A-levels as I would have liked. So I took the logical approach of doing a degree in something I really enjoyed, which funny enough was infectious disease and microbes and viruses, which I know is a bit of a weird thing to be interested in, I guess, but I loved it. And then I decided to pursue my dream of becoming a doctor after it. As you progressed through your degree, did you consider essentially foregoing medicine and instead going down that career path into research? So I guess that was always at the, um, the front of, uh, forefront of my mind. Um, the logical next step from doing a degree in microbiology and virology was doing a master's and then doing a PhD. Um, but I was actually kind of put off doing a PhD and kind of going into academia whilst doing my kind of third year dissertation. Um, so I kind of decided to myself, well, you know, this is the time to apply for postgraduate medicine. And if I don't get in, I'll probably look at other things, maybe something in the civil service or maybe more to do with outreach and kind of engaging the public in science. So I think I was edging more towards like policy in science rather than more academic research. I think it was just that there seemed to be a lot of pressure on academics at the moment. It was a lot of pressure to get grants, a lot of pressure to to keep studying and working and never actually kind of relaxing and actually enjoying the research you were doing. A lot of the kind of colleagues I spoke to were saying that it's just quite hard life being an academic and I've always wanted to do something that I'm going to enjoy and medicine was the logical choice. Have you had any thoughts about specialty? Oh that's a big question. <laughs> um, I, I've i done a lot of drama in the past and kind of musical theatre so I've, I've always been quite expressive and loud so I kind of always thought that maybe that's a good thing to do in a kind of a, a specialty such as maybe paediatrics where you can be kind of fun and and you can kind of help keep the kids mood alive because obviously they're not in the best of places if they're having to require medical treatment so anything I can do to help them just feel better about themselves whether that's just acting a bit silly on the ward or you know speaking to them nicely and kindly is it's kind of my dream I hope but I've been told by a lot of people that you go into med school with your kind of dream specialty in mind and you do something completely different. So I might end up being, I don't know, a foot doctor. Who knows? <laughs> what was the easiest thing you found about making the transition to medical school and what was the thing you found most difficult? So I think the easiest thing I found with coming to medical school was that I was in the fortunate position to have come to Warwick before. So I knew the campus, I knew the area, I already had a few friends who were kind of joining the same cohort as me as well, who were from Warwick. So I found it a lot easier to settle in. And I, I'm, I think that's quite a hard thing to do when you're coming to a new university for the first time and meeting 150, 60 extra people. It's actually the settling in process. So I found that the easiest. The hardest thing I think was, I'm gonna go with the kind of the, the more biomedical um, knowledge base. A lot of my friends were really hot on their anatomy, they were really hot on their, their biochemistry and I, I was less so. So I found I had to put in a lot of time, especially my first term, like going over just basic anatomical concepts like superior, inferior, you know, what, what blood supply to the organ, what's doing this and that, because I honestly had no idea, I'd never done that before in my degree. Um, so I actually think that was the hardest challenge for me was getting up to the same knowledge base I felt as other people. What's been the highlight of the course for you in first year? So that's a, that's a really difficult question. Um, I've had lots of highlights this year and I don't think I can, can pinpoint just one specific highlight. Um, you know, I've made an amazing group of friends. There's specifically a, a group of four of us who, you know, we hang around a lot. We've done so many revision sessions together, gone to so many lectures. And that's been such a highlight meeting them because they're amazing people. Uh, another highlight's been obviously doing the MedSoc review because not only did I get to meet older years but I got to really kind of solidify friendships with some of them. It's hard enough coming to medical school and meeting a whole cohort of about 170, 80 people but then also being able to then meet second years, third years, fourth years doing the review and kind of learning from them about the challenges they faced in younger years and, and ways to deal with uh, any of the problems we might face uh, was really, really useful. And then 
I wouldn't say it's a highlight, but it was it was an insightful experience to say the least. Um, I came down with a sort of viral meningitis uh, type thing uh, early into the course and as such I had to go to A&E and get admitted to hospital for the night. And it was actually really quite nice to see the stuff that we'd been learning in lectures actually put into practice in the, my treatment when the staff were treating me. And it was amazing just seeing everyone working together, the doctors, you know, the nurses, HCAs, porters, cleaners, everyone just getting so involved and meshing together nicely and it was really actually quite inspiring seeing them all working together. And uh, a funny funny moment from that was that actually one of the anatomy teachers from our anatomy days at the hospital was the triage doctor who treated me at first. Um, and it was so nice to actually have her teach me whilst I was being treated. I don't know if that makes sense, but there was a moment where she did a test where she pulled my knee up to my chest and said, does, your, does anything hurt? And I said, yeah, that's making my neck and my spine really, really sore. And she said, well, do you know why that is? And I, and I said, no, not at all. And she said, oh, it's because when I do this, it's pulling on your spinal cord. So it's kind of making the, uh, the pain in your meninges kind of accentuate, basically. Um, so even there, kind of feeling awful, I was still being taught about medicine. And it was, yeah, it was quite nice in a weird way. <laughs> Have you found the content from your old degree useful when coming to med school? Yeah, of course. So, um, Obviously doing microbiology and virology, we did a lot on kind of antibiotic use, antibiotic resistance, and then also antivirals and kind of developing uh, infections like the Ebola crisis, for example. I was doing my degree during the kind of Ebola scare a few years ago. So that featured a lot in our, in our modules. Um, coming to medical school, I felt quite prepared in our kind of infection overall module, as it were. Um, but I've definitely, definitely had to work hard with my anatomy and also my kind of more biomedical, biochemistry um, topics, sort of kind of uh, like blood pathology and things like that. Um, but I have felt prepared in terms of infection at least, so that's, that's been useful. So I hear you've been involved with the URSS scheme here at Warwick. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, so URSS stands for Undergraduate Research Scholarship Scheme. And it's basically a scheme set up by the university to kind of allow undergraduate students to, um, to kind of pursue some research kind of during their summer holidays. Um, I basically thought to myself during my first year, I don't want to spend my summer without any money and just kind of working in a pub or something back home, just spending my whole summer earning some money to then come back. I wanted to do something that was related to, to medicine and kind of something I enjoyed because the URS scheme will, URSS scheme will give you a bursary of money. Um, so I chose to do it for that reason and I picked a research topic. Uh, I was looking at kind of brain bleeds and how you can better detect uh, brain bleeds and strokes in the future. So working with a colleague in life sciences who I knew from my first degree, um, he allowed me to basically trial this new technology they've developed which will allow you to take a blood sample just from a finger prick, like a glucose monitor for a diabetic. And you take a tiny bit of the blood, pop it in this machine, and it will tell you about the levels of purines in the blood. Purines are a, um, a sort of a biochemical uh, compound um, that is released from cells when they undergo kind of oxygen, like hypoxic damage. So this machine was detecting that and hopefully allowing us to detect strokes and brain bleeds earlier than with a CT scan. That was my project. Did it work? It, it kind of worked. We, we could only recruit four patients, unfor unfortunately. Um, I spent a lot of summer just refreshing head CT scan lists for brain bleeds and for anything we could use. And we only were able to recruit four patients to the study, which is lower than what we wanted, but it gave us some good results. What's one bit of advice you would give to all people thinking about applying for medical school? I think something to say is, you know, it's not to give up on your on your dream. If it's what you really want to do and you know you're passionate about it, if you fail at the first hurdle, you know, you don't get a great UK cat, you don't get any interviews and you kind of come to the application process and you've got nothing to show for it. It does feel rubbish. I kind of, I applied first time round, didn't get in and found myself as a graduate without a job and nothing to do. For a year and it was tough and it was stressful but I managed to find a job as this outreach and public engagement officer and I worked hard and then I applied again for medicine and I got round on my second go uh, 
just one offer. That was all it took. I didn't get offers from anywhere but Warwick. Uh, my UK cap wasn't the best, if I'm quite honest. It was only just over 700 on average, which I think is at the like, super low end of kind of postgraduate entry medicine UK cat scores. But it was enough. It was five more UK cat points than the first time round I applied. So if you fail the first time round, don't worry. There's always another chance. You can always do it again next year. Spend a year doing something medical related or in my case, not medically related at all. Make sure you've got your work experience under your belt, but do something different maybe and apply again. And even if your UK cat is only five points higher, it could be enough to get you in. <laughs> and how about any work experience you did prior to med school? So I used to work as a HCA for three years part time uh, during my undergrad. So whenever I went home for Christmas, for Easter, for summer, I'd go work at my local community hospital. It was only a small hospital. There was only about 20 patients on the ward, but it was a rehab hospital for um, elderly people who've had falls or have got dementia or Alzheimer's. So that was a really good first-hand insight into the medical world. And then at Warwick, you obviously need to have two um, work experience placements. So the second one I did, I used to do first aiding at the nightclub on campus, which was an experience to say the least. We saw some very interesting things, uh, which I probably shouldn't divulge, but um, that was a very, very good experience actually in kind of frontline medical care at the point of need. Um, so those are my two experiences. And what do you think you'd be doing if you weren't training to be a doctor? If I wasn't training to be a doctor, I'd like to pray and hope that I'd be trying to fulfill my dream of acting and going to drama school. Um, I used to do a lot of shows when I was younger. I, I did a couple of West End shows and then I um, did a lot of shows at uni and at school. And hopefully if I wasn't doing medicine, yeah, I would be soaring in the heights, maybe. <laughs> but no, medicine is, is the, has always been my ultimate goal. Branna, I know that you've done a lot of drama and musical theatre and things like that in the past. Have you found that during the first year at med school there was time did you have the time to carry on these sorts of things? Yeah, that's a really good question. So a lot of people say once you go to medical school, that's it, your life's over, you can never do anything fun again, you just have to study, study, study. I would like to put forward the other argument that actually there is time, there is a lot of time for you to relax and to do things you still enjoy and kind of give yourself a bit of a life outside of medicine. So I got involved doing two shows last year during my first year at medical school. I was involved in the MedSoc Review, which was a comedy show, just kind of taking the mick out of the medical school and medicine in general. And then the second show I did was with Music Theatre Warwick, uh, MTW for short, who I've done lots of shows with over the past few years. And we did a performance of a show called Rent. And it was honestly one of my highlights of my first year here at Warwick Medical School. So yes, there is plenty of time to do your hobbies and just kind of keep yourself relaxed. It was a great stress relief. And I would advise to anyone that comes here to join a society and and do something relaxing. We're in the same year obviously so how did it feel for you kind of going through the first year then being hit by the exams and then how about going into second year? So yeah that's a great question and I'm, I'm sure if you are coming to Warwick now for this year you've probably heard a lot about our exam process and and some of the difficulties we faced as a year. Um, it was tough, I won't lie to you, it was, it was stressful. Um, I, had, I think I had a bit of a different revision kind of ethic to most people. Um, I knew a lot of friends who would work non-stop. They'd wake up at six o'clock in the morning and they'd work till midnight and then they'd rinse repeat every day for two months. I couldn't do that as a person. I, I, I needed my relaxing time. So I'd make sure that I would set the hours I'm gonna work from. So I would do nine till six, for example, every day. And then I would have my evenings just to myself to just relax and just not think about medicine, play some video games, I'd have dinner with my flatmates. I would actually try and do everything I could to avoid thinking about medicine so that when I came back the next day, nine o'clock afresh, I could go into it with a clear head and, and learn better, hopefully. Um, obviously the exams themselves were hard, um, but I got through and I was really happy I got through and I had a nice summer. I went on holiday and then obviously I did my project. Um, and I think I've come into year two with a nice clean head ready to start again, but we're three days into lectures now and 
the contents come in come in quite thick <laughs> but we're getting there thank you everyone so much for watching um my email address should be on the screen right now so please do email me with any questions you've got or even just you know say hello and say you're coming to warwick this summer and you'd just like to meet up thank you um it was three years long and then i oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> off the cuff <laughs>